Let's continue to work with the properties that we can apply to the flex container. The next property that we're going to look at is justify content. The justify content property is used to align the items along the main axes. This is the direction in which flex direction has set the flow. The initial value is flex start, which will line all the items up at the starting edge of the container. But you can also use a value of flex end to line them up at the end or center to line them up in the center. In addition, there are space values that set the spacing of the elements within the container. Let's look at how these work in practice. Here's the page that I'm going to be working on. Once again, I just have a div with a class of container and a class of C1 and three items, each sharing the class of item along with their own unique classes. For the CSS, I've set the container to have a display of flex and I have a width property of 80%. So the container is flexible and it will grow and shrink as I resize the browser window. What we're going to do is we're going to add the justify content property. We'll set this to flex start to begin with. If I save my page and I refresh, nothing is going to change. And that's because the flex start value is the default value. It ensures that all of the items begin at the starting point of the main axes. Since I never specified flex direction, our flex direction is using the default value of row. So that means that the main axis goes from left to right. Let's explore some of the other justify content values. I'll go into my index and I'm going to expand the commented code that I have here. Let's uncomment this out. And as you can see, this page is just a series of these containers with three items. If we save the page and we refresh, all of the items are going to be using the justify content flex start. We'll go ahead and we'll target each unique container and we'll set our justify content to some of the other properties. So I'll just go ahead and add this in for all of my containers. The second one is going to use flex end. The third one will use center. The fourth one will use space between. The fifth one is going to use space around. And the final one will use space evenly. If we save the page and we refresh in the browser, you're going to see how the various values are going to affect the items inside of our container. So flex end pushes all of the items to the end of the main axes. Center is going to horizontally center the items within the container. Space between distributes the items within the container along the main axes. The spacing between each of the items is the same. The first and last items will appear flush with the main start edge and the main end edge. If we look at space around, the items are evenly distributed within the container along the main axes. The spacing between all of the items is the same. The empty space before the first and the last item equals half of the space between each of the adjacent items. And finally, space evenly is going to distribute the items along the main axes. The spacing between each of the adjacent pairs and the starting and ending edge of the container are all going to be exactly the same. As you can see with justify content, we have a lot of ways in which we can space out our items within the containing item. This is extremely helpful and it gives us a lot of different ways in which we can adjust our items. The beauty of this is that as we scale the page, the spacing is going to adjust when needed.